actually a uh, Guru Shishya Parampara declaration, uh, which is actually known as Guru Mukhi Vidya. We didn't have a communication before, so whatever Guru teaches to, the, to the his students or disciples, and that uh, education carries forward. The student becomes Guru, and he creates more students, and again, it goes so on. And uh, in music, it is very much needed. Uh, because uh, in uh, Indian, Hindu Sangit uh, classical music, nothing is uh, written. I mean, we have to improvise each and every note. We have the uh, proper format of uh, uh, playing uh, the ragas. The basic of the Hindu Sangit scheme is rag. So rag is a melody, fixed notes of, uh, uh, it can be five notes, six notes, or seven notes. And in that uh, framework, the rap framework, we have to improvise. And it can, we can improvise from five minutes to five hours when it rap. Depends on the caliber of uh, an artist. So coming back to the Guru Shishya Parampara, it is a much needed, uh, 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 much needed tradition because uh, uh, we cannot just write and uh, uh, read it and then uh, play the music. Because uh, when we improvise, we need our heart. And we, the coordination of brain and heart learned from a proper guru. In Frank, second in Frank Afim for months or uh, years together. And then we exchange, the, the guru exchanges his experience and his thoughts to this, uh, his disciple. And then it goes on like many generations. So, uh, I learned uh, my music through the Guru Shishya Parampara. And uh, in uh, uh, ancient times, we had many gurukuls where uh, the students, they used to uh, uh, go and learn. The, they used to stay in the uh, ashram of gurus and learn for six years, seven years, 12 years, 20 years. Then the guru is not satisfied about their performance or their uh, uh, caliber of uh, performing. Uh, so, uh, but now in these modern times, it is quite difficult to do that because uh, uh, we have to take care of many things and we have to take responsibilities of our family also. So, uh, in this modern group, I think uh, I used to drive with my group and get help with When I was 11, uh, I started going with him to many places in India and abroad and uh, being with him, just watching him playing and watching his behavior with, uh, in the times with other people. And uh, uh, I used to uh, obey, I still obey him. And whatever he says, I have to obey. I, I, I'm not supposed to ask any question why it is like that. It is not actually, uh, uh, guru doesn't like why it is like that because even he didn't ask his guru why it is like that. But whatever guru says, you have to obey him, and when you obey him and perform uh, or learn or practice like that, then you get proper results. If you have too many queries, then uh, you won't get that much result. You just have to blindly uh, keep Can faith you in your guru and uh, uh, learn it and play like that. So uh, even now, uh, I can't ask any cross questions to my Guruji at this age or so. But uh, uh, when I am with him or when I uh, learn from him, then I get my answers automatically. Mm -hmm. So it is not easy to uh, explain how it works, but it's like, just like a Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. So we get the connection without knowing from where it is coming. It is something there. but it, uh, it uh, transfers to, from Guru to the disciple. So same way, uh, now I'm sitting in the Chinmaya University in Pune, uh, which is uh, a unique university in the world because uh, there is not such an, uh, no such university in the world which teaches your Guru pattern and offering the certificate course of university. Because nowadays, the certificate has become a major issue. To, if you don't have any certificate, you will not get any job or recognition. So once you pass from the university, you have the certificate, then you get a job or you, can, you are eligible to perform also.
So here in uh, our Chiang Mai University, uh, I come here uh, once a week in a month, and I stay with my uh, students. I share uh, my uh, my experience. I teach them uh, music, and also uh, uh, I share. I eat with them. And we just sleep together whole day since six o'clock in the morning to night ten. We are together, mm. so which is the core uh, system of Guru uh, Padati. That's so. Uh, no, yeah, yeah. I was just saying that's a great overview, sir. Thank you. Uh, uh, let's talk a little bit about the so-called great Bombay names in connection with this tradition. Tell us a little about Pandit Vishnu the Gambal Paluskar School which was actually teaching uh, written courses in music. Yes. And how um, it was a milestone and why it was a milestone. Yeah. Uh, since Pangit Vishnu Dhiram Parpanguskar and Vishnu Narayan Bhatkhange, they were uh, born in Maharashtra and uh, then they shifted to Bombay. So Bombay has a very uh, unique, uh, very uh, I mean, a major contribution in uh, classic in Hindustani music because these two giants, uh, Bhatkhange ji and Pangaskar ji, they started writing the rags and the uh, location of the compositions, which was not there. So they, they evolved their own system of location writing. And because of them, we, know, uh, we have preserved so many ra ragas that we know nowadays. Because it is said that uh, in Hindustani Sangeet, we have more than 3,000 ragas. And it is not possible for any guru to pass it to the students, 3,000 ragas. Or, we, cannot, we cannot just know each and every raga. Mm -hmm. But because of Pangit Paguskarji and uh, Bhatkangaji, we have this documents, documentation and we have many ragas. And also they created uh, such a curriculum that even a uh, layman can understand what Hindustani music can be. So uh, they uh, wrote many compositions and they, uh, they, uh, took, uh, they invented many times in Hindu, uh, Indian music that this type of playing is called this, like Murchana, Avir Bhav, Tiro Bhav, and Pakkai, uh, Wadi, Samwadi of the Rag. Because uh, that Rag we improvise, we should know the main modes the major modes and uh, the which modes which we should not play, and the uh, pattern of improvisation. So they have a big contribution, and we owe a lot to them. And uh, if uh, uh, I have a say to the Indian government, I would request them to uh, confer them uh, Bharat Ratna to both of them, mm -hmm. because they clearly deserve the Bharat Ratna uh, award. Mm -hmm. um, before we go ahead, sir, can I request you to play something for our audience with your with yourself and uh, yeah. your students? If Maybe uh, uh, I can suggest uh, I have uh, my students with me. Sure. You can ask sure. them their experience here as a group uh, pattern. Sure. So then we will play. We'll come back to that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. Okay, good.
So this was our one. Wonderful, wonderful. So how long on average have all these students of yours been with you, sir? Uh, so say again. These students have been with you for how long, sir? Uh, this, they are doing the Masters of Arts okay. in Pansori. So we have this two years uh, course here. Okay. And before that, they are learning from some uh, some other gurus. But okay. once they are here now, they are learning from me. So this is just okay. their first come, first semester. Okay. But few Wonderful. of my students like Ritesh uh, and Prasanna uh, uh, and Manjitji, they are learning from me since uh, more than six, seven years. Wow. Okay. So moving on to the question, uh, back to our question, sir. Yeah. Was this Guru Shishya tradition, me traditional method, was it unique to India or are there similar teaching approaches elsewhere in the world? Nowhere in, yes, nowhere in the world, only in India. So it why was, do you think it developed only in India and only in Hindustani classical music? Uh, see, it's not only music, even the Ved, Vedanta, they have this Guru system. Mm -hmm. So the campus he, where in Pune, here I am in, is uh, it's known as Chingmai Vibhuti. Correct. So they have this group for Ved and Upanishad. So they teach their this Ved Upanishad also. With and this they tradition. Have one branch, uh, big uh, campus in Kochi, where they teach uh, Sanskrit philosophy and other courses in Guru Kulam tradition. Mm -hmm. So uh, when the Shishya and the Guruji live together. There were a lot of interaction in terms of the household chores, etc., cooking, sweeping, etc. How did that all help in the learning process of the student? Uh, in uh, our Indian tradition, we catch feet of our gurus or elders. So why we teach, uh, catch? Because to get their positive energy to us. So likewise, when they give uh, food or uh, tea or anything, so that in, uh, that. Uh, Catch becomes very uh, pure, and the, through that uh, our souls, you know, they connect. Back. And once we, our souls are connected, then everything is much easier to explain and explore. So this tradition, it must be thousands of years old, and we yeah. don't know the origin, etc. But do you think it has evolved and changed over the years? And uh, uh, how does this mixing up of the traditional system? with a modern teacher-student relationship, how does it deviate from the earlier concepts? Uh, see, uh, Indian culture is known for the ch changing. Adaptation. Change is constant. Yes. So we adapt a very good things from others, be it uh, uh, Muslim uh, culture or Christian, uh, I mean, uh, Western culture or anything. So whatever is good, we adapt that. And we try to imbibe in our, in our culture. Likewise, just, we are just having, uh, checking on Zoom, this interview is on Zoom. It is the uh, uh, best example of that. And uh, we are wearing kurtas, but sometimes we also wear just t-shirt and jeans and we play. So we have to keep the pace with the changing uh, things and changing needs. Otherwise, we'll be, we are thrown away backwards. And uh, musically, we have to, uh, we have, to ex uh, we have to change a lot also, because uh, previously uh, we used to play, we used to teach one rag for two years, three years. Like for me, my Guruji, when I first went to him, he, he taught me just one rag for five years mm -hmm. to check my patience. Okay. Whenever I used to go to him, he just used to say, can we just play Bhairavi, practice Bhairavi, and he used to play Bhairavi. So, uh, but now we cannot do that because it, since this is university and we have to cover so many other things as a portion, other ragas. So we have to, but we have, we have kept the ragas to the minimum and performance at the highest level. And, uh, but one thing I always do with them that morning, they have to practice very well. So I have told them that till your last break, you have to practice that. Great. Um, uh, uh, a student uh, who comes to a guruji like you, he learns through the notation system or through the oral tradition? Which both, both. Both. Yes. Because uh, we cannot bypass our oral tradition. Because, mm -hmm. see, if I, I'm not, I can't uh, show them how to play or sing for them with their notes, they won't be able to understand. 
then they write the composition, and then they sing themselves, they play, and then it is, once they have, uh, they have got a bio hack, then they don't need to see that. But to have, uh, sometimes we just share the uh, composition on the WhatsApp group, and then everybody is there so they can check everything, and then it helps a lot. And then we have also that documentation, so for the exams, they can use that. So, so as a teacher, sir, how, when do you rely on notation, and when do you rely on oral teaching? Uh, say again. As a teacher, as a guruji, yeah. when do you rely on the use of notation, and when do you rely on oral teaching? It goes uh, simultaneously. Simultaneously. Yeah, because I, I teach them, and then uh, they play, and then I, when I think that they are not able to play, then I can them to write. Then when they write, then the things become clear, and then they can again buy hack. Um. Would you say Hindustani classical music has adapted itself, especially because of the pandemic, to use of uh, technology like YouTube, podcasts, etc.? And is there any scope for uh, enhancing these traditional methods of teaching with the use of modern technology? Yeah, see, uh, I have few students uh, who are uh, enrolled in this master's program. One is from UK and one is from Andhra Pradesh. And uh, he, he's from Delhi, and so they learn online also, and uh, then we have this comprehension that in one year, another year, they have to come thrice to the university, because seeking in front of guru is most important part of that, and we cannot uh, bypass, we, can, we cannot escape that. So, so a, lot of, a lot of patience is required. You said you practiced Barak Bhairavi for five years. Uh, now, in this modern day and age, everyone is talking about speed and efficiency and everyone wants everything instantly. Has that put any strain on the teaching methods, sir? No, no. Because we cannot have a shortcut in this. Mm -hmm. We cannot. Like uh, if uh, one athlete wants to run a marathon, huh. so he has to put that much effort. Mm -hmm. A 100 meter runner, he cannot complete marathon. I mean, he can, but the training is given. So this Indian music is like a marathon. Mm -hmm. so we have to put that much effort, otherwise we won't be able to play. Yeah, but we have to adapt many different techniques. And previously, I mean, in olden days, the gurus used to get angry very easily and they used to scold. But I believe in uh, teaching with love, not with the anger. Mm -hmm. So if you can anything with love, we get connected. Or better easily. results. Yeah, yeah. Right. So uh, given this background that everyone wants everything instantly, how has the duration, the methodology, and the intensity of training changed from the time when you were a student, sir, to now as your time as a teacher? Has anything changed as far as the duration and the method of methodology of teaching? No, nothing has changed. Only thing uh, we have adapting, we are adapting new things. Like in uh, my time, there was no Zoom, so I had to go to Guruji and come back. But now. We, we teach on Zoom and then we record it and then they have an access so they can reconnect and they can reuse. So it is coming faster than which uh, the our market which we had before. Okay. So in a way it is helping us uh, to preserve everything and uh, it is a good thing actually which has happened. We cannot buy, we, we have to keep pace with this. So coming to your special instrument, the flute, how does age affect breathing capacity, and which is so important for playing the flute? Uh, see, uh, for me, I think uh, as long as you play more and more flute, you become more strong and powerful. Uh, so because this is just like a pranayam, breathing. So why we do this breathing exercise, pranayam, to live more and to have our uh, good uh, Lung, lung power and everything. So once you start playing Basri and pr practice regularly, then your lungs become very powerful. Powerful. Only thing you should have good food. What do you recommend, sir? Whatever you like, which is <laughs> good, <laughs> which is good healthy. Practice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, there was a question from the audience, which I'm going to re uh, ask you to take. Basically, he was asking that uh, uh, the, the, this parampara is known only in Hindustani classical music and to the best of his knowledge, not in Karnataka, uh, not in Karnatic classical music. No, it is, Why? Exactly. It is there. Yeah. If you could talk a little bit about the similarities and the differences in See, the approach. 
yeah, Carnatic music has different composers. They have composed their music and then they have to play, learn and play. So there is also a system. There was also a system because Carnatic system and Hindustani system they came much later. Our culture of Gurukul is much before that. Mm -hmm. so Carnatic music and Hindustani music uh, system they came maybe a thousand years back or something like that, 500 years back. But Gurukul system, like in Vedas, Rishumuni, and they used to have Gurukul. That system is always there. So we cannot say that uh, Karnataka uh, uh, music has no uh, such system. But yeah, I can can that in Hindustani music we have gharanas, different gharanas, and Karnataka systems they have different composers and they have, they play their compositions. So this is a major difference. So you played abroad many times, and you also visit and teach uh, overseas. How does a non-Indian audience approach and understand Hindustani classical music? Uh, I think uh, uh, for me, I, I don't play, I, cha I don't change my style of playing. I just play work with the style which I play in India, I play in uh, abroad. Because uh, if we, go, we don't uh, stick to our uh, roots of playing, then the Westerns or the uh, foreign uh, countries, they won't, we won't be able to understand what is real music. If we don't play our real music, how do they understand? So even the Indian audience who, who is born uh, uh, abroad, they are not aware that much. So whenever I play, as for me, I mean, it's my, uh, uh, my choice that I play my style, like uh, playing with a slow, Indian, Hindustani music goes from slow tempo, medium tempo, and high tempo. So I just follow that one, and that is more effective. Mm -hmm. And the impact is more. Mm -hmm. It's like, I mean, and then once you, uh, like to listen that and when you enjoy that then you get more, more uh, happiness in that and because uh, uh, our music is for the soul not Correct. for the body what, uh, what are your thoughts sir, on fusion music world music have you experimented with it yeah, or is lot, that... lot, yeah. because uh, whatever there any music there's only, there are only seven modes so any music is good I, 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 can, I, I will not say uh, fusion music is back or pop is back. Music is music, as long as it is entertaining and uh, exploring many new uh, avenues in, through the music. So I enjoy even pop music, even rap music, if it has some sensible words, and jazz, of course, and Western classical music is also very, it is a great uh, tradition, great composers. So I enjoy that listening also. And I listen to learn any kind of music, be it folk music, Western music, pop music, jazz music, because we can learn a lot. Because in Indian music, we can imbibe many things to, uh, to uh, any other music. So I, I recommend everybody, even my students, that you should listen to each and every music. And it's not that only Indian music is good and great. It's not like that. Each and every music is great, because we have seven notes in each and every music. So to a lot of people, Classical music can become can very can be very intimidating if they don't have a ear for it. So how should someone who is interested in it but not aware of classical music how should they begin to they can, try yeah, to can, understand Hindustani classical good, good music? Good question. Just keep listening. You know, I mean, now I guess we have uh, YouTube in our hands in mobile. So when you wake up, uh, first fifteen minutes just listen to morning rap. And before sleeping, just before that 15 minutes, listen to night rag, that's all. Then you get into, because when you listen before sleeping, it goes on the next day. So yeah. it can help, yeah. Good tip for anyone who's interested in cultivating a year for music. Right. Uh, can, can classical music be a full-time career for a young flautist of for instance all your students what will yes. they do two years down the line will they be teaching will they be performing what will they be doing they can do everything because in our curriculum we have apart from this uh, raga uh, system we have we also teach them the audio video techniques the recording mm. techniques and then uh, uh, mass media and uh, event management courses we have uh -huh. so they can because uh, maybe some some students they want to become some other thing, but they can pursue their music and become a mass media person or uh, like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And also they can teach, 
and they can perform. So we are doing, we are grooming in, in that, uh, that scale. They can have the many choices. So speaking of performing, can we request you for one more small piece, sir? Yeah, sure. Before Jatit Kulkarniji, our assistant professor in Chingmaya, in Masaki. He's British. Persona. This is Rav Bhupari. Mm. 
Thank you, sir. Thank you, everybody. Uh, he is uh, Dipin Das. He has done his masters from here in Tabna. Okay. And uh, I will just uh, tell you the names of our gurus. I'm the guru for Bansuri, and then we have Angit Abhijit Banerjee for Tabna. And uh, he's in USA right now. Okay. And uh, we do Shri Mandusha Patin for Vokas. Okay. And uh, we have campus director and uh, HOS uh, Shirmati Pramodini Rao. Uh, so, we are a very nice family and enjoying our the courses. In the true music. tradition of staying yeah. together and learning together. Yeah, right. Uh, look, let's look at the questions which have come in from the audience, sir. Uh, Commander Mohan Narayan's question is as follows. Uh, each garana had its own style. Then would the interpretation of the rags be different in each garana? Yes. Previously, it was like that, but uh, now, because of the globalization of uh, music, uh, globalization, music is also into that. So now, many artists, they also learn, uh, for example, if uh, a singer is a vocalist from Gwalia Gharana, he also likes to experiment with Agra Gharana or Jaipur Gharana, and he learns that, and then he performs like that. So it's a good thing happening, and then the, he has his own kind of uh, ranking the rock. And keeping so, the garana intact. Yeah, so that was his next question. How is the grammar of the raga then adhered to? Uh, see, uh, because since he, it was a Guru Mukhi Vidya, and uh, many rag has, ragas have been changing. The rag which was played 500 years back, maybe they have changed. Like for example, we have rag Chandra Kons. So previously the notes were different. Now, since it is Guru Mukhi Vidya and Guru Mukhi Guru, and it is uh, uh, transferring the database. So, uh, Chandrakos notes have been changed, just like that. So, it is evolving? Yes, it's evolving. And nothing okay. wrong in that. Nothing wrong in that. Uh, Shreya Swani has an observation. He says that in the Bhagavad Gita, it is stated that Krishna reinstated the Guru Shishya Parampara, which was coming to an end during that time. Do you have any thoughts on that? Uh, say again, please. <clears throat> he says that in the Bhagavad Gita, it is stated that Krishna ji reinstated the Guru Shishya Parampara, which was coming to an end during that time. I don't think so. It's going on. You, it's, you, have, an, you have an example here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, question from Janvi When Riyaz feels repetitive, how do you expand your improvisation and create one more in one raga? Yeah, see, uh, why do we practice? Because the riyas is which we have to improve, which we cannot play, or we, which, uh, which has, uh, we want to uh, increase our playing. So it's like making a rabbi. You know, we get milk and then we warm it, make it hot, and then it becomes rabbi. It's like that. So Riyaz is also like that. When we practice more and more, if we practice six hours in a day, then we are able to perform one hour on, on the stage. And the mm -hmm. ratio is like that. Mm -hmm. Lot of hard work. Okay. Uh, question from Krishna Gopal. He's saying that he wants to understand the role of learning vocals to play and understand the flute better. 
the role of learning vocals? It's a vice versa because even, uh, I mean, of course, like I was playing with them and I sang the composition for them. So even for vocalists, if they learn any instrument, it's always better. For any instrument, if we learn vocal, it is always better, but also for the vocalists, if they learn any instrument, uh, big bansuri or uh, sitar or sarah, because the main uh, advantage of instrument is that we know which is the sa re gama padani. We can feel it, we can see it. For vocal, they have to imagine it. Mm -hmm. like that. And for instrument, we try to imitate the vocal. So, since we know the notes, we can play much better. And for vocalists also, if they learn any instrument, you can help them. Yes. Okay, uh, this question from Michael. Michael, I'm going to request you to unmute yourself and ask your question. Michael Divine Arts has a question. Can you unmute, unmute and ask? Okay, he's probably logged out or something, but I'm going to read out his question. I basically only know from Dr. Oke's work and being a jazz musician as well, I feel there is a special quality to be kept up. I, I think he's referring to the quality of the, this, this teaching method. He says that there is this very special quality to be kept up, which, which we do not have an equal temperament. So he's basically uh, praising the, the parampara tradition. Yeah, as, as we have to learn in a parampara, parampara and that uh, word is known as sabak or tanim. Mm -hmm. Once we get that rigorously for six, seven years, then we reach to a certain level and then we can perform and we can, mm -hmm. then we start moving into the music, moving ahead. But learning is a continuous process. Not only music in each and every Everything. thing of uh, our life, yeah. Michael, I hope that answers your question. I'm, I'm sorry that unmuting did not work for you. Uh, question from Kerry Krieger. Please give us some tips or exercises for improving meme. Oh, okay. So, uh, for me to play the meme, you need the patience. Anything, if you want to perform slowly, you need the patience. Yeah, like. <laughs> So if we practice as slow as possible in Anap, then we can we automatically improve our Ming and also the Gamak. A follow-up question from Michael. He wants to know if there is any practical tip for low octave Komalda. Practice only, there's, there is no other way. <laughs> that is the answer to yeah. all perfection, right. really. Question from Krishna Gopal. He says, for the flute, how to learn both styles, the gayaki and the instrumental? And uh, what is the difference in these styles and which one is better? I know which one is better. May, both uh, are better, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, so he says, how to learn both styles? You have to get a good guru who knows, who can, who, who knows how to play the both the styles. So, it, is, it becomes easier, not through YouTube or something like that, but you have to go in front of the guru and learn. Hmm. He says he's currently learning from Dev, Devo Priyaji. Okay, it's good. There's a question from somebody whose name is Mas. He wants to know about Gamak. 
Yeah, the, you know, I mean, uh, somewhere I, I read one more, that if you want to play fast, practice slow. <laughs> so the ANAP is a core uh, business, you know? You have to deal with the ANAP properly, then you will be able to play as fast as possible. Yeah, so it a mean on Gomak. So you mentioned a little bit about your uh, university. Could you tell us a little more about when it was established? What are the core philosophies, etc., of Chinmay University? Uh, see, we have this Chinmay University. The main uh, campus is in uh, Kochi, uh, but this off-site campus is in uh, Pune. It's 50 kilometers uh, away from the Pune. It's uh, in Ashram Chinmay Vibhuti. And here we teach uh, Bansuri, Hindustani Bansuri, Hindustani Vokan, and Tagma. So we are three gurus, and we come every month uh, for a week, uh, stay here and teach. Whatever we, we know, we share our experiences, uh, our thoughts. And also, I learn from my students also many mm. things, like uh, technology also. Mm. So it's a I enjoy coming here with my students and checking with them, playing with them, and to just make our souls happy. This is the main motto. And again, the, the another major motto is to get the certificate and they can get a good job. Or they mainly, job is also there, but mainly to get a good vision of music. Mm. In Hindi, we call it drishti. If we get a good drishti in music, and then we can go miles, miles and miles, and we can become a good musician. And if you are good in anything, you can survive very mm. easily. Mm. Uh, one more question from Krishna Gopal. He said, he says, apart from live concerts and YouTube, what are some of the other mediums to listen and learn good, genuine classical music? Just go to the auditorium, buy the tickets, and then... <laughs> so you believe live performances are... Live, yes, live performance. There is nothing parallel to compare, compare to live performance. I mean, even we, I, I, in pandemic, I was playing online concerts, but playing in front of the audience is a different thing, because we also get inspired. And if we see Fung House with the uh, sold of tickets, it's more better for yes. everybody. For any performer, that's a big high. Yeah. So can you request one more performance, one small performance before yeah. we end? Yeah, so yeah, do you have any choice to listen so I can... I will leave it to the audience. Is there any preferences which you want Panditji to play? Somebody has said Ra Kedar. Who's that? JJ Banti. Uh. Vimpalas, come on. Vimpalas, Jayjavanti, Kedar. Yes, your choice, sir. Yaman. Okay. Somebody so said they anything later. They want to book it. Book it for us, eh? Yes. Yaman. So uh, uh, I start with uh, Hansadrani, which is very common, very popular. And I will play some few ragas which they want to listen. It is known as Raka Mamika. So book it for us. Great.